as music professionals, because you are musicians, but you are music professionals when you do the management, <coughs> the promotion, the, 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 the. So, MENT is in Kinoshishka. Kinoshishka is uh, an equivalent of cinema venue, concert hall, and exhibition. And uh, Mark Sheridan, who's just arrived, who has to come here. So, who's going to give him a seat? No, please, because we are also streaming. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Aliki. Now it's. Uh, <laughs> It's not a leaky. <laughs> so I just finished for uh, Peter's uh, uh, introduction. And Mark Sheridan, say hello to Greece. Hello to Greece. And to the United States. And the US. And to Mars. And uh, Mark here, who's another one to blame for today's meetings and uh, seven or eight years of collaborations. Mark is a an, an very special person who loves music loves to use music for many, many different uh, uh, reasons. He goes to support children, uh, to uh, um, educate uh, um, uh, adults, to train from Strathclyde to how many universities to today where he's amongst others in Inverness. He has a music consultancy office uh, for decades. He uh, used to be, like most of the Scots, oriented on the United States. That's where uh, the North uh, England was exporting. And he uh, was enlightened to think that maybe Europe is not that bad after all. So he is one also of the uh, uh, very important persons for music in Scotland, where they also thought that, OK, we need to connect with uh, the rest of Europe. So. As we were saying, we we're making a small session in English, and uh, because you we are here, <coughs> both of you, he is an A and R international artist who just signed up with KXP in Seattle mm -hmm. with his sister, and uh, uh, Aliki was and is one of the few managers we can call it, okay, or project manager as well, eventually in some <laughs> cases, which has traveled in many showcases in Europe. So, it's seen from here, maybe. Or you do the questions, or they start speaking. But I think what you can ask all of you is, what is the key to success? Do I have to sing in English? What do I need to go out? Do I need to like just don't care about my Greek market and think that I need to go abroad? What do you have to suggest? Feel free to do the dialogue. Silence. This is for the camera. Yes. And so I think BJ Nick had a question. You, you raise your hand, no? Uh, no. Okay, so let me let me Okay. What's the key to success? <laughs> okay. I yeah. well, I don't know the key. To, if I was, uh, I knew the key to success. I wouldn't be sitting here. No, I'm not. <laughs> like uh, probably then. Um, go to Mars. Anyone who'd let me join the club, I wouldn't want to be a member of. And um, I was, I was just asking. Uh, I was in Muse Expo last year. If I'm speaking too fast or the Glaswegian accent's too much, just please say. Okay. I was in LA last year, um, Hollywood, for Muse Expo. It's one of the biggest A and R events for the world, and they, were, they had a stellar um, cast of speakers and so on and so forth. And I can tell you, George, some of the material. And some of the I, I wrote some articles for the Times, the, 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 the Times, while I was there. Um, massive A and R, lots of discussions about um, signing, uh, lots of discussions about um, Spotify streaming. The general feeling uh, from the experts, and they were really experts, was that the multi-billion-pound industry of music is still rising and growing. Most of us would think, well, we're not seeing much of it. But um, there was a lot of optimism about it. And I came away, I was there 
um, with our Highlands and Islands uh, enterprise. In the north of Scotland, we have an, uh, a, an, an agency funded by the government largely to encourage businesses, all businesses. Some of the biggest businesses in Scotland at the moment are renewable energy, for instance, wind farming and so on, and with whiskey and so on. But the music industry has really had a renaissance in the last 30 years, largely to do with traditional music, Celtic music, Gaelic music, hundreds and hundreds of young people in bands and so on. And I was out with the, the, this group because we're thinking of starting a Gaelic label not to, just to distribute records or CDs or, or DVDs or whatever, but also the other add-on, the whole business of um, licensing and so on, uh, which a lot of our artists are not getting advantage of. The main messages that I took away, you know, should we sing in English, should we do that? Authenticity. Authenticity was the big message. And you guys, are, you'll be hearing this, and if anything, it's just reassured what you know anyway. Authenticity and good or very good isn't good enough to really make a break. The break you have to be exceptional, exceptional, authentic. The other thing was about the story. It's not just about the music or the song, the performer, the whole package, the presentation of the person <coughs> and the backstory and how you project that, this you know. Um, the other one was, don't try and select your audience. Or don't go for the most obvious audience, you think, my artist will sell to this. Really consider it as a global market. For instance, we think Gaelic, Celtic music, Canada, orientated towards the diaspora, New Zealand, Australia, Cape Breton, Northern Spain, Celtic Spain. But in fact, our message was, maybe it's mom and pop radio. Our young artists might appeal to that. We don't know, and we shouldn't just be selective that way. We need to think differently. And really explore all other markets. The other big challenge for our musicians was they would need to compromise their art to some extent. Musicians don't like being told what to do. And if you say, well, what about this is the barrier? It seems to be, certainly in our world of traditional music and maybe indie, it may, I may be wrong, other musicians might be more tempted to work with other producers and directors and so on, sound engineers, because they want to experiment and push out. But the challenge for our folk was actually compromise that and maybe go in a different direction and so on. That seems to be some of the ingredients that seem to work for those that aspire to the higher places, you know. I hope that makes sense. Lazarus. Actually, I have a question. I'm going to make a clarification for this because one thing is that when you're creating a song and one thing is when you receive an order from a client. Yeah. So can we make this the distinction for the creators and the ad hoc creators? Because when I'm when, when mm -hmm. I'm a client, I demand for you to make what I want. Mm -hmm. But when you make your music as a creator, I cannot interfere. <coughs> so in my mind here uh, right now it would be useful to make this clarify for the audience and the market at the same time. Well, Maybe the others may want to pick up on that. I mean, I think the one message I would have for some of my young musicians mm -hmm. is that you need to be able to take advice and change what you're doing and maybe compromise your art because the persons that are moving the next part of the chain selling your stuff might know better how to sell your stuff if it's done differently. Now, then you can question what does authentic mean then? There's a, there's a conflict there. Mm -hmm. There's a conflict yes. there. I think I agree with this because you need to sell your music eventually. But I'm also the artist side on, on the way that if you choose an artist and if you if you, you as a client as you said, then you have to to choose the right artist. So if you choose me that I play techno, for example, and then uh, you ask me to to experiment on stuff like Seraphim, then I'm not the appropriate one. So I have to compromise uh, as an artist, but uh, also. 
you know, it depends on what they ask you to do, I think, because then you're not uh, real. You know? So it's, I think it's a, a line between those two. Do you think that it is an issue of identity? Because if I know As that well. you are a techno artist and I'm looking for a jazz artist, it would be a fault. Yeah, but it happens a lot. Like, so if the artists are able to communicate in, in a clear way that, look guys, I'm producing techno music and uh, my audience is this, it would, it would be actually uh, less effort from the clients to choose the right creator. Definitely, that's why you have, you need to build your, let's say, product. Audience, so. community, and, also. And like, if you, like, let's say, okay, I'm on this three acts, okay, different kind of music. Mm -hmm. So if they, they need to have a promo package, like uh, they need live videos, they need photos, they need, uh, <laughs> Um, their creative team to build their music, to sell their music, or to introduce their music to people and manage their industry people. So they need uh, they need to make it clear. They have, need to have the portfolio ready, be ready all the time. Like if I ask you as a booker that I'm not the biggest booker or anything, if I ask you send me your music so I can book you for a festival. And then you artists, you know, they, they answer two weeks or three weeks later. So then, the, you know, you can't work. So I think, but it was another topic, sorry, you changed direction. But yeah, I think your question was about your statement, sorry, it was about. Actually, it's a good question how to create dialogue. But yeah, yeah, no, I was I mean, coming from the side of what Mark said regarding authenticity yeah. and originality. Because you, when you know when an artist is producing or creating, you are really aware of what he's making of. So instead of go searching something in, in, a, in a blind field, yeah. you can choose the right person because he has the right promo back. Exactly. He has placed himself in the market in every kind of music, classical, jazz, Chinese, techno. I don't care. But since we are talking in marketing terms, mm -hmm. also musicians have to accept or to embrace that they are playing in a field such as tough as the, the, the market itself. Otherwise, there's not going to be a distinction between the amateur and the wannabe professional. And this is also a question that, am I an artist? Mm -hmm. Am I a professional? Or I am both? Exactly. Yeah, I agree. It's a bit interesting. Artists need to, to go with the industry. You know, they need to promote themselves, they need to be prepared, they need to network, they need to write their interviews, they need to post on their Facebook. If yeah, to the bit of that. Uh, that's my exact problem. An artist is an artist, he creates music. Or we're talking about music specifically now. He creates music, he doesn't, he's not necessarily cut out for the rest of the things that come, because you're talking about promoting, doing everything on the internet and everything. And uh, because I've seen many bands, because I've worked with many bands, they make the music, they create the album. It's beautiful. It's authentic. Yeah. Then they have nothing to do with it. Uh, for example, there was this band, they sent like tens of uh, emails, they approached many companies all over the world trying to get a label, to actually, nobody even answer. We're not talking about uh, signing yes. them, just an answer. I mean, it's incredibly difficult for somebody who is capable of making music, even a masterpiece, I would say. Let's say that today somebody makes a masterpiece. So there is no way for this masterpiece to be actually heard. That's the main problem. The part of it is, is luck, there's no doubt. And some of these guys, you know this, they get tens of thousands. Yeah. Every, and they can't listen to all and select and there are people and they'll just fade and they could be the best thing, the next best thing. George, sorry. I think we are between us and that was exactly the idea. Can you define what is a masterpiece for you? And shall I define what is a masterpiece for me? Mm. Mm. I couldn't define that, but... Uh, no, I mean, we have to be honest. Yeah, definitely. I'm saying this because I know, for example, prestigious, uh, they say enfant prodige, I don't know how you say that. No, not enfant prodige, <laughs> Mozart. Okay? They cannot find labels because they are too good and they don't belong to, to labels. 
Have you thought about that? Yeah, but I think it's basically I'm a little bit romantic. I see things from the music side. I'm with you. No, no. I'm from the music side. No, I'm a little bit romantic. But what I wanted to say, and it's my last thing, is I had the chance to be at the top of the A and R for years on something that, as you know, has around 700 bands. Of the 700 bands, it was a discussion we, we made with Cosas. Who's doing the selection? Yeah. Well, today I'll give you some of the tips I know. I have all the emails, almost, of the info that comes with, you know, angry people, sure. not angry people. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And one guy is sending every year a message saying every year it's the 10th year in a row that I have applied to play at your festival and I'm not playing. So, because I'm polite, I would like to see the guy in front of him, eyes to eyes, and to say, Man, you're saying this to me? I think you should think of why nobody's choosing you. Yeah, yeah of course. But... So, there is an extra thing that I have to say as a musician. I have seen for years how many CDs do you have at home? How many vinyls do you have at home? How many concerts have you been? I see, not only in Greece, Peter and Mark and everyone. Obviously, sometimes I see a masterpiece in music. I hear a masterpiece, but it's 30 years old. Yeah. Another problem. Or well, if you had listened to what's going on around the world, exactly. yeah. it is a masterpiece, but not accurate anymore. Okay. It has been played. Don't okay. forget that we're talking about authenticity. Yeah, yeah. yeah but authenticity, yeah. he said, it's one of the ingredients. It, doesn't, it didn't say, it's, yeah. unfortunately, it's a mix of things. Yeah, but you see, this is uh, you're talking about the business side of things. No, no, Which, no. Of course, I I include the business side of things, but uh, there's also the music side of things. Yeah, I but mean, the competition. I mean, uh, Alex, I you have competition. What are the clothes you wear? What are the, the label? <laughs> no, really. Yeah, you have competition. How have did you choose to end up to buy it? Well, it was the price. Yes. And when it's a product, a little bit more expensive. <laughs> It means it came to you. Yeah, but these are clothes. We're talking about the music. Yeah. We cannot play right. with the same. Right. Let's not the moderate of the audience fight. Can we actually have more from the audience? It's not a fight. I no, think it's, it's not a fight. No. I'll tell you one thing, George. We all know what is what is no good. I think so. We all know what when something's not good. Yeah. Or not good enough. It's it's margins. Anyway, others. Uh, can I say something? One thing. Maybe. <laughs> what I believe when I, I'm talking about like music, and when I said before, the artist needs to first of all, uh, forget to mention, I believe that the artist, and I have not really like a standard, for example, in my mind, that the music is the best. I mean, I'm talking about the best music. So uh, even if it's not, I'm taking as a as a uh, yeah, I can't work uh, or. For an artist, spend my time, travel around, do a lot of work with him. If I don't believe that his music is the best, uh, otherwise, and I don't work with I don't like. I'm in one of the showcases uh, in uh, uh, in Groningen. Eurosonic. In Eurosonic. I met the manager of Stevie Wonder, Kit Harris. He's a very important person in music and uh, in England, and he's very involved in everything. Actually, you might not know him, but. And he told me he came to theater, so he's one art of my that I used to work. And then he gave me feedback, and he said the same thing. You need to be exceptional. You need to be uh, the lines need to be perfect, and um, uh, synchronized with the uh, with the music. The music you have to be perfect. Like you have to work for the band. The band has to work as well. They mean in music. And if you have the right team around you. Team. There is a team. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But team is the problem. How do you feel? Yes, I agree the team then. One person. One man show. <laughs> In most cases, I'm friends. How important is where the musician is based to promote the music? For example, we are based uh, in increase in Athens this year. How important is if we were based in England or Germany, in the USA? And what about if we are based online? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe our international guest. Uh, Peter from Slovenia. Yeah. Well, we'll take a small country and not too late. I think 
maybe not just directly to answer to your question, but I was listening to this conversation now and I see that uh, uh, for me, there is no key to success. So I, I, I'm in Slovenia, we are working a lot for building up the new generation of music professionals and uh, <coughs> workshops. And you can see that many people come to the session and just waiting with the pen and the papers to hear the, 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 the most important sentence, the formula how to success. And the main message is actually there is no one formula. So we can speak about some circumstances it's like this, okay, you should care about this, you should care about this, you have to have a good product. It is masterpiece, who knows if it is masterpiece for you, maybe you will find somebody else and this is going to be masterpiece also for somebody else. Especially if you're coming from some boutique music scene, you can maybe find some community which is crazy about the things you are doing. Uh, and uh, for example, in Slovenia we have a problem. All of the bands who want to play abroad, they're trying to sound like English or American band. And if you go to showcase festival, for example, in Vienna, you have a feeling, okay, I was actually, I was here three days and I was listening to one band. Everything seemed to sound, sound similar. And well, what the thing that you keep is in your mind after that is usually something exceptional, something exotic, something what you actually have. We have a problem in Slovenia because we don't have really something traditional music. I'm sure that in Greek we have much more of this. And I'm crazy, for example, about Turkish music because I like the sound of Turkish music. I don't want to see the Turkish band playing some American stuff. This is not the point for me. Because if I would like to listen to American music, then I would choose probably the American band. I don't know. Uh, so um, for me, the most important question is, uh, beside the product, is, are you actually, is the band actually expert ready? Can you imagine? You have a fantastic album. You have a super good musicians, you have super good agent, but you have the money to go, uh, you have a support from expert office, whatever, but uh, is, are all of the members of the band really ready to do that? 